An entitled Karen falsely claims that we try to poison her at our restaurant and even goes as far as lying that she's not only having a heart attack, but also going to call the police unless she gets what she wants. Here's what happened. Okay, so this happened back on Christmas Eve of 2021. I was only in that day to do final preparations for the big day, to finalize and double check all the pre-orders, and to start right the running orders. Basically, it was going to be a very busy day. I pop out from the office to the floor to grab myself a final coffee, as I expect to finish my admin in the next hour. And that's right when I see the chef standing at a table. So at this point, I know this is either really good or really bad. But then the chef walks off with their plates, so that's when I'm thinking, okay, this is really bad. I get the rundown from the chef, and the couple, who is a man maybe in his 40s, and his mother, who's maybe in their 70s, accused her of trying to poison them because their sausage was cut in half. So I head over to the table. They give me the same story. Your chef cut the sausage open and tried to check if it was cooked, so that clearly means that she was trying to poison us. Okay, for starters, that's actually just how the dish is presented, and the sausage is sliced horizontally and then propped up on itself. And secondly, if the chef had cut it open to check if it was cooked, then they would have seen it was before they served it to you. So if anything, you are more safe this way. And also, this is literally why we have probes. They then told me that they wanted red wine gravy, and I said to them, well, as you can see on our menu, we don't sell red wine gravy. These people then said, then why did your chef say that she was making some in the kitchen? And the reasoning for that was because our Christmas Day menu tomorrow has red wine gravy on it. So they said to me, okay, so give us some of that. But I said, no, because that's literally being pre-ordered and it has been for months. They then go for the entitled statement of, oh, well, I don't see why we can't have it, which doesn't make sense because someone else has already ordered and paid for it. So yeah, I'm going to give it to them instead of you. They then start telling me about how distressing this is for his mother, who has a heart condition and that now she's having a heart attack. I said to them, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Please let me call you an ambulance. Well, when I said that, they said to me, no, no, that's not necessary. So I think to myself, oh, okay, that's real convenient. Anyways, I then tell them that I'm not going to charge them for anything, and that's because this is part of our guest satisfaction guarantee. Well, they refused and say that they will pay full price, and I suspected that they wanted to do this so that they could say that they paid for food that was stolen away from them, but I simply refused. They then said to me, well, we're just going to leave the money on the table, but I respond by saying, okay, well, I've already told you that I have wiped your bill, so that is already dealt with. Therefore, any money left, I will definitely view as gratuity. They then shoot their head over to me and say, we are not tipping you. They then started recording me and asking me to explain myself, but I really don't think they expected me to respond in the way that I did. I said to the camera, hi there, I'm the restaurant manager, and it's currently the 24th of December, 2021, and here's the situation as follows. But before I could even go any further, my favorite part about all of this is that he tells me he's going to call the police. He then dials a number on his phone, and I genuinely do not know how this happened, but then one of my waitresses pops her head around the corner from the host stand and says, I'm sorry, but it looks like you've called our restaurant phone. And at that point, I had to turn my head away to stop from laughing. They then came back with a typical, you've just ruined Christmas for us. And I just thought to myself, yeah, well, you haven't exactly made mine any better. I've still never seen that video pop up anywhere, which really makes me sad, but this is honestly one of the most unbelievable experiences I've ever had at this restaurant. Yeah, those people were very clearly trying to scam you and your restaurant out of money, or at least trying to have some kind of like smear campaign against you and everybody else there. Like seriously, they not only lied about food poisoning and also having a heart attack, but also said, I'm going to call the police. Like all these weird veiled threats just to try and get what they want. So good for you for standing your ground and not taking this for another second, because these people were clearly just trying to scam you. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for scolding my wife's nephew in public after he consistently and constantly kept misbehaving just to try and make me, my wife, or everybody else frustrated? Because right now, I'm not sure if I'm in the wrong, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, I need to start off by saying that my wife and I disagree on this. She said that what I did was pretty messed up, so I'll try to explain as neutrally as I can. We are on vacation taking our kids to visit her nephews. The relevant parts are that there are five kids ranging in ages from 9 to 16 years old. The 12-year-old, who is my wife's nephew, is the one that I supposedly snapped at. I rented a large home so everyone could stay together, and I had tried to redirect his negative behavior until it kept getting worse and worse. For example, on the first day, he opened the car door while I 
was driving over 55 miles an hour. But I laughed at it, joked that that shouldn't happen, and then child locked the doors. On the second day, it was his constant complaining that we weren't all doing the activities that he wanted to do, specifically that he wanted to play pickleball. I tried to explain that as an adult and without any anger, that we flew thousands of miles and planned this trip specifically to a national park to see this area. We have a separate part of our vacation for games and hanging out just like that. Well, he still pouted and complained. So I had all of us do an extra one mile hike for the day. And as a side note, I think I might be the jerk for doing that, but everyone, including him, actually enjoyed that hike the most. But maybe it was still wrong of me. On the third day, we were all cleaning the house to leave, and I heard him ask my nine year old son if he wanted to go wait in the car. My son then told him, Why? So you don't have to clean? That's messed up. Now, I did not say anything, and I just looked at the two of them. A little bit later, my wife asked him to help the other kids clean up, and he just flat out ignored her and stayed on his iPad. Later that day, we all went to a lake and he was skipping stones, and eventually he ended up skipping them near people. My wife told him to stop and that he needed to either stand on the other side of them or throw them in a different direction. But he argued with her that he didn't need to because he said that he had good aim. But I interjected and I told him that your aunt asked you to, and that should be good enough. Nobody wants rocks thrown near them. He started throwing them in a different direction for about 10 minutes, but then he threw them right near the other people again. So I stopped him and I told him off in a loud voice. I basically said to him, your aunt told you not to do something and you did it anyways. Why are you doing that? Do you think it's funny? Do you like me yelling at you in front of other people? Would you like me to force you to go up to that couple and apologize? Do you think people want random rocks thrown near them? Get it together right now. Well, my wife thinks that I'm in the wrong because in her opinion, it's not my place to discipline her cousin's kid. But in my opinion, I'm aggravated because I informed this kid's mom of all these events after they happened and she did nothing to prevent the escalation. I think this might be a cultural issue as well, as to me, it seems quite normal for any family member to discipline a child. So am I the jerk for correcting my nephew in the way that I did? Because right now, I'm seriously not sure what to do. No, you are not the jerk. This kid was being obnoxious the entire time this trip was happening, and he was literally testing the boundaries of what he could and couldn't do the entire time. And that, in my opinion, absolutely needs to be corrected. He cannot get away with acting like such a delinquent the entire time and expect to just get away with it. Because let's say he did skip those rocks at those people and it hit one of them in the eye or something like that. I guarantee you that the second that happened, that kid's mom is going to be like, well, why weren't you watching him? Why did you let him do that? And try to pin the blame on you for not being present for her kid's actions. Like this really would have turned on you immediately and I don't blame you for stepping in and being like, wait a second, we are not doing this. And if anything, it was more about just like self-preservation as opposed to policing what that kid can and cannot do. Because in my opinion, when you are responsible for the care of a child, you are also responsible for the discipline of that child. And if that kid really is going to act up in that way and the mom's not going to do anything about it, then in my opinion, you are fully within your right to put him in his place. An entitled old jerk almost runs me over with his car, but then tries to flip it all on me and basically try to blame me for getting behind his car, despite the fact that he definitely was not looking where he was going. Here's what happened. So every day I take a walk with my dog around the neighborhood to get him outside and get some exercise for myself as well. Sometimes I'll go in the morning on weekends or in the evening during the week when it's a bit cooler outside. Well, this morning I went on my walk and I typically take the same route. So I pass by the same houses. Most are owned by people who are a bit older and there are some that are a bit younger. But after living in the neighborhood for five years, I'm probably half the age of the average. Right at the start, just down the street from my house, a truck pulls into his driveway and I don't really think any Anything of it. They also pass by me so they would have seen me on the sidewalk. I had my dog and my friend's dog that I'm dog sitting as well. Usually if I see someone get in their car in a driveway, I ensure that they see me or I wait till they back out if they didn't look around before getting in. In this case, I assumed that they were arriving and not going to be backing out again. And sure, it was dumb of me to assume, but it seems pretty obvious to me. I continue walking and as I'm right behind the truck, they throw it into reverse and I yell to let them know that I'm there. Well, they immediately start yelling at me. They're getting incredibly aggressive. I quickly see they are two older gentlemen with gray beards and looked like they were maybe in their mid-60s or so. I let them know to check their surroundings and look behind them before backing up. They then start swearing and berating me, saying to me that I knew what was happening. You knew. You knew. And I'm just like, no, I don't know where you're going at all times. They did apologize after some exchange back and forth. And at this point, I 
was pretty upset. The apology was multiple of them saying, we were wrong, you a-hole, with a pretty big emphasis on them saying a-hole. They were driving slowly behind me on the wrong side of the road as I'm trying to walk away. The driver put his truck in park at one point and opened the door and threatened to fight me right then and there. At that point, I wanted no part of the situation. I told him to get back in his vehicle and not approach me ever again. I had two dogs, and likely it wouldn't have ended well for him, but I'm not the biggest guy out there, and it would have been two guys coming at me at once. But eventually, they turned around and left. I was probably in the wrong for yelling and swearing at them in response to their aggressiveness, and I was not nice in any way after they started yelling at me. But I mean, come on. My dog is everything. Not even considering my friend's dog and how much he adores me. I was so pissed off. I have backed out of my driveway a couple of times with people close by that I didn't notice, and I would always immediately apologize. It was crazy how quickly they tried to blame me and started getting super aggressive. And you know what? People make mistakes. That's life. But you really just need to own up to it. Luckily, no one got hurt and they stopped when I yelled that I was behind them. But I'm honestly so sick of these entitled neighbors and I really hope I never deal with them ever again. Yeah, those guys were completely in the wrong. For starters, there is no good excuse for them not looking where they're going. Like you're on a public sidewalk. They're in a motor vehicle and they have every responsibility to look out for you. And you know what? It almost seems like they pushed it in reverse the second you got there, almost on purpose. Almost as if they try to do it like vindictively to try and like make a point. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it sounds like they're the kind of people who definitely would try that if given the chance. So you know what? I don't blame you for getting aggressive and swearing at these idiots. Because that's exactly what they were. They were being really dumb and almost got you and those dogs hurt. And it would be far too late if they actually injured you or those dogs in some kind of way, because that would have been absolutely tragic. Am I the jerk for being a supposed bridezilla and not inviting to invite my half-siblings to my wedding? Here's what happened. I'm a 25-year-old female and I would be getting married in a few months. We are in the process of getting invites ready, but we hit a snag because my parents, mostly my mom, are upset that I don't want to and wasn't planning on inviting my half-siblings. My mom is the parent that we have in common and their dad passed away while mom was pregnant with my half-sister and she met my dad seven months after her first husband died. They dated and quickly moved in and started helping her with my half-siblings and they wanted to become a family. I was born within the first year of their marriage and even though I'm less than two years younger than my half-sister, we were never even close and I wasn't close to my half-brothers either. They didn't like that mom remarried. I also understand that for them it was very fast so they really didn't adjust to all the changes that happened in those two years of their lives which I can also completely understand. They stuck by each other though and that included my half-sister. They made sure that she knew that she was their dad's kids and not my dad's and that I was a half-sister. My mom did a lot to discourage the use of half and I remember I started saying it pretty young because my half-sibling said it and she would correct me and correct them as well. My half-siblings never expressed their dislike of me to my face but their disinterest said a lot. My half-sister wouldn't play with me. She and my half-brothers would talk to me a little but it was always like them with me and not the four of us together. Even when the boys moved out, my half-sister was distant. My mom and dad would have these family fun days out, but they usually ended with my half-sister screaming that my dad was trying to replace her dad and he needed to leave her alone. The boys would also come home to see her and would take her out. Sometimes they did it while mom was at work and refused to listen to dad saying no. Other times she'd go with them after school and I was never invited or included. We are all adults now and things have not changed. My half-brothers are married with kids and I was not invited to their weddings and I have not even met their kids. My half-sister has two kids as well, though she's not married. I saw her oldest once, but didn't get to interact or anything. They talked to mom, but the relationship is somewhat strained. Mom told them that she was disappointed they were so cold to me and that they refused to even have a friendship with me. Knowing all this, though, my parents want me to invite my half-siblings and their families to my wedding. They know there is no chance any of them would say yes, but mom said that I should still invite them and that I should show them that we are still family. My dad then told me that it was a bridezilla thing to only think of what I want and not think of what the family wants as well. So am I the jerk for not planning on inviting my half-siblings to my wedding? What should I do? Honestly, I kind of see this both ways, but I side more with the original poster than I do with the family. For starters, I can say that, yeah, you probably should still like extend the invitation, but in my opinion, I don't blame you for saying, no, I'm not going to do it. These people have absolutely made your life miserable by keeping you out of their lives. They've intentionally distanced themselves from you, and they've 
basically made it so that you have no connection to them whatsoever. And in my opinion, they had literally years to figure their lives out and try to change that negative attitude towards you. And that alone would give me more than enough justification to be like, no, you're not showing up to my wedding. And also, more to the point, like, why should you have to invite these people, especially after how cold and distant they've been towards you? It doesn't sound like you acted like that. If anything, this sounds like a one-sided thing that they started. Because at the end of the day, you did not ask to be born under these circumstances, and you definitely did not ask these people to treat you so poorly. So in my opinion, I think you're completely justified to turn them away and not even invite them. Because just like it was mentioned, there's a very high likelihood that they literally will not care in the slightest. An entitled old customer decides to park his scooter right in front of our double doors and effectively blocks anyone from getting in and out of our back rooms. And I'm honestly so sick of dealing with customers who act this way. Here's what happened. So I work at a popular retail corporation and I pick up orders for people that ordered online. I have a time limit for these cards, but a lot of times people, usually the older generations, assume that I should move for them. But you know what? They wouldn't have to worry about employees as they're shopping around the store if they didn't take up the entire aisle and walkway. Anyways, in the book section of the store past the aisle is the back wall of the store and the one of two sets of doors to the back room. It is a frequently used door by all employees except for front of store people. When employees have large, wide, heavy, long carts or carts in general, this is the door that is the most used. It's easier to pass through the book aisle than to try and make a sharp turn and try to squeeze through a different aisle. And in fact, the book aisle is wider for this exact reason. Anyways, this old entitled jerk on an electric scooter decides that he should park his scooter right in the aisle and just sit and talk on speakerphone for over 30 minutes. My friend, the electronics employee, tried to gently herd the man out of the aisle by asking if he needed any kind of help, but was instead met with a glare and then followed by the lead stare. Several people were stuck pushing through the small aisles with huge carts and unwieldy items, and customers were also struggling to get by this man. He wasn't even talking about shopping or what they needed from the store, but instead he was just having a casual conversation. So I honestly can't understand why he decided to park his cart right in front of the giant swinging doors that people are constantly going in and out of. There was also a perfectly large sort of empty walkway where he could have stopped his scooter and minimized the amount of space and items that he was blocking. But I'm honestly so sick of customers that act like this because they are some of the worst people to deal with in the world. Yeah, that sounds incredibly frustrating and it sounds like a situation where like, okay buddy, I think you need to read the room. I'm pretty sure all the foot traffic around these double doors should have been enough evidence for this guy to be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't park my electric scooter right here. Like, you seriously have to lack a significant amount of self-awareness to not catch on that, hey, maybe I'm in the way. Maybe I'm the problem in this situation. So truly, I know exactly where the original poster is coming from because entitled and selfish customers who act this way truly are absolutely the worst. Am I the jerk for telling my friend that she literally causes all of her own problems and then has the audacity to try and complain about it when she knows that she's the one that did it? Because right now, she's saying that I lack empathy and that I'm abandoning her. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm a 27-year-old female and I have a close friend who we will call Jane who is constantly complaining to me about the same few things that are completely changeable. She'll beg for my advice, I will give it to her, and then she'll do the exact same things again and continue to complain about them. It got to the point where it honestly seemed like Jane was doing these things to have a reason to complain. So I eventually stopped giving her advice, but would still just let her vent. Recently, Jane switched jobs after years of complaining about her old one and how she felt underpaid and underappreciated, which I do agree that she was. So I helped her get a new job at my old place of employment with a significantly better salary. My old boss had left, but I was still in touch with one of my old co-workers who we will call Sarah, who told me to let Jane know that the new boss will sometimes call employees after hours, but they are in no way legally obligated to answer and would it be penalized for not taking a call. Sarah said that neither she nor any of the other co-workers have ever answered a single call and to tell Jane to do the same so that he doesn't keep bothering her. I explained this to Jane before she got the job and asked if she was sure that she wanted to take it knowing that the boss might try to call her after clocking out but that she in no way was responsible for picking up. She said she understood and still wanted the job. So I set up an interview for her and she ended up getting the job. Well, a month in, Jane started complaining to me that the boss keeps calling her, requesting things during off work hours. But I told her that both Sarah and I had warned her not to pick up so that she wouldn't keep being bothered by 
by him and asked why she picked up anyways. She scoffed and said, because I'm a good employee, so why wouldn't I pick up? She then continued to complain about how annoying it was to work at a place where people condoned that and how she should have just stayed at her old job. And at this point, this is where I might be the jerk. I got very upset at that comment because I worked so hard to secure an interview for her. So I said to her, actually, the only person condoning that is you. You knew before taking this job that the boss might try that and you were warned to just ignore it but chose not to. And now you're complaining about something you don't actually have to do? You always act helpless and like all these situations just unfairly happen to you. But you're actually causing more of your misery yourself and I just can't help you anymore. I ended up going home while Jane texted me saying she couldn't believe my lack of empathy and abandonment when I knew that she had a rough life. I told her that she knew I also had a very hard life but I am now an adult who takes responsibility for my problems and that she should do the same. One of our other friends told me that Jane was really hurt by what I said and that I was really harsh and I should have gone easier on her. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk at all because it sounds like Jane literally is the master of her own problems. Like seriously, let's look at exactly what happened in this story. She was well informed to the fact that her boss might try to call her after hours, but now she's trying to play dumb and be like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. Almost as if she didn't know about this ahead of time. But it's like, yes, you absolutely did know about this. She was literally informed by the original poster who was told by Sarah. So it's honestly complete nonsense that she's not only welcoming this problem in her life, but then complaining about it as if nobody told her. So no, you're definitely not the jerk for putting this lady in her place. Because the way she's acting, in my opinion, is super annoying. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.